Today we're going to do the Perspective Ruler in Clip Studio Paint. It's one of my favorite tools in the program. This piece, which I use for my uh, BRB screen and starting soon and ending soon screen, was done using the, the ruler and also a photograph that I took. Boop. You can see that the photograph is not in one point perspective. But I made it into it. Uh, so I just sort of took where everything was going to go and then I used the tool. Uh, so you can see all the purple lines. That is the perspective. That's my underpainting, so you can kind of see where everything is. But the, the tool, when it's active, doesn't let you go outside of what would be the appropriate line. So it doesn't matter how much I do this, it's not going to let me. It's always going to follow the tools. So this one is in one point perspective. You can see that there's just this one point here. Right here. That everything leads into. that point right there. And you can see all of these lines go directly to that point. Even all the way out here. And this is how you would do it on paper, except you would use a ruler and very carefully mark out all these lines. But in Clip Studio Paint, it's virtual, so the computer does it for you. And you don't have to do shit. You just have to tell it where that point is. And the way that you do that... Especially if you already have a picture. So this is an actual picture of my desk. And when I wanted to do the perspective ruler, I knew I was going to do one point. So I wanted this edge of the table. Oops. I have pressed all of the buttons that are wrong. So follow this edge of the table. And then you can follow any other edge. And you can just do this one. You can pick one on the other side, it doesn't matter. You just want to be as accurate as you can be. And that's our perspective ruler. Now, if I switch to a pen tool... If I switch to a pen tool that you can see because it's on the top layer... Uh, you can see it's following the perspective that I laid out. And the perspective is a little off because I didn't do a perfect job of, of redoing it. But as long as I'm going straight up and down, straight sideways, because my, my um, horizon line is sideways, or, or following these lines, I can draw perfectly. I cannot make circles or anything. So anytime I need to do that, I need to turn off the perspective ruler. You can do that by clicking on it and then hitting show ruler and it'll stop showing the ruler. Now I can make big curly cues, which is how I did details. Like these dice up here. And the way the bag is. Lots 
lots of other little things, like the, the front of the microphone is all, all free-handed without the tool. Let's look at one more one point. So this is a sketch that I started today. The singular point is in the very center of this piece. And you can see wherever I've drawn, wherever I've drawn these, these squares, I can immediately make a, um, a little house. So let's, I've turned the perspective ruler off temporarily. I'm going to draw a little rectangle. We're going to say this is a house right here. It like that. I'm gonna grab the straight line tool. We're gonna turn the perspective ruler back on. You notice that I have it on its own layer, so I can just turn that layer on and off. This is just a, an easy way to do it. You don't have to. Uh, you can have it on the layer that you're working on. But I find it easier to put that stuff on its own layer in the long run. So I could just do all of those lines. And then if I want to do the bottom of this, I need I need it to match up with these original lines up here. So I'm going to take the, the ruler off. And I'm going to make parallel lines to those ones. There are tools to help you do this too. We'll get into that a little later. Now I'm just going to delete the bits that I don't need anymore. Let's put the door here. Turn on the perspective ruler again because the door would be in perspective. We want to turn it off for the top because we want to match that, that line. If you want to keep the, the ruler on all the time, you can. So let's grab... Let's grab uh, the rectangle tool. I'm going to put a building right here. And you'll notice that the that it's like perfectly uh, parallel to the horizon and vertical line. But it is like absolutely it's it's way easier to do when it's on when it's on the grid, so to speak. Let's put a little door there. Windows. Just gonna stretch this across and then we're gonna make some separations here. And voila, our windows are all set. They're all in the correct place. They all match up. You can do very complicated things like the mayor's house here. He's got a big wall around it and he's got like a little, he's got a window here and he's got his inserted door and another window here and this little porch here. The tavern inn has a bunch of kegs out front and a porch. 
look at all the roofs I did. Here's the sawmill. Got a tree in it. <laughs> uh, I did this cool uh, wizard's tower archive thing in perspective. I did this uh, salt box house over here in perspective. And these were all lots of fun and interesting to do. And yeah, some of them are very simple, but some of them aren't done. Like, this is just a square. With just a little bit of work. It's a box. And after it's a box, it's a house. And I will show you how to do a roof real quick. Let's do it on this one. I'm gonna find the middle of the roof here. I'm gonna turn our perspective ruler back on. There's the middle of our roof. Right there. Turn our perspective ruler off. Just connect those lines. These ones are probably just going to be straight in. So it's like slightly, slightly to the, the, the sides because of the way that it is. But like it's, see, this is the center here. So this is slightly to the side. So it goes slightly in comparatively. And then all we have to do is erase our extra lines and we will have a roof. You can also make a box uh, that comes off the top of the roof. We'll do that in a second. It's a little more complicated than this one, but it has more precise results. Let's do it on this one. Uh, yeah, this one's fine. Turn our perspective ruler back on. So we want to essentially make a second floor that we're going to erase most of. Perspective ruler off. We want to be parallel with our base box here. on this side. So we're going to make a little little guy like that. And then we're going to use this point. We want to make it parallel with our box lines. And then we want to go from this corner up to this corner down. Now we need to erase all the shit that we don't need. And you can see the roof emerge. And yes, this is more precise than the other method. But it's also more annoying, so you do you. Oops. 
that's how that works in first point, in one point perspective. We're going to move on to two point perspective real quick. So two point perspective has two points. Shocker, I know. We're going to look at this top one first. They have very, they're very similar, like, as far as where the points go. So I left this partially blank so that we can play with it. So one of the cool things is, as long as your perspective uh, ruler is active, you can use the rectangle tool and the circle tool and the polygon tool all inside of perspective. So let's make make a door here. Let's make a door in black. Let's make like a big, big door like that. Oh, and I click it again to release it. So I have adjust angle after, after you fixed it. So after you decide how big it is, you can move your mouse around. So like, that's on the wrong angle. But if I go like that, it's on the correct angle. And that's just from moving my mouse. Again, correct angle. Uh, so let's... let's grab the straight line tool. You do not have to use the straight line tool. I just like doing it, especially in vector. Uh, and because this is, okay, so this blue line here is our horizon line. So anything below the horizon line, you're going to see the floor of. And anything above the horizon line, you won't see the top of. So you'll see, you'll see the floor here, but you won't see the floor of the roofs because your horizon line is here. So this is like your eye line or where the camera is directly facing. So anything below it, you see the inside of. And anything above it, you don't. We're just going to carve out a little, little bit in here. Let's grab the rectangle tool again. It should be like this, shouldn't it? Because we won't see the top of it. Click to set it. Grab your eraser tool. Boop. And I have it uh, erase up to intersections, so it's erasing all those bits in between. And now let's make a door. You can't just do this with the line tool. Let's do it with the line tool so you can see. So we don't draw a line there. Draw a line across. Let's draw the door frame. Let's draw one of those big uh, push things. In fact, let's make it say push up here. So let's grab. We're going to zoom in real good for this. And, well, it's... I'm going to go to scale. Actually, we're going to go to scale and rotate. Because I want it to be the correct size-ish. So we're just not going to rotate it. We're going to just leave it like that. And then we are going to turn this into a roster so that we can edit it. 
We're gonna go to transform. We're gonna go to distort. So we want. We want to match up this door handle, essentially. I'm gonna go. We're, we're gonna go this way first. There you go. Now it says push. That's how I did the cool store. I used the inside of the um, the sign here to to help me figure out where the bombing box should be. Bounding box. Talking. Good at it. I'm gonna go back to here because we are. Below the eye line, we're going to see the bottom. There we are. So that would be the, uh, the window ledge. In fact, we can make like an actual window ledge. Of course, you can do all of this with pencil and paper and ruler. This is how you do it. Easy mode. Now, it looks like a dispensary. What kind of city is this? Uh, yeah, there you go. Let's, uh, let's knock some of these extra lines out. Did I put that on the wrong layer? Sure did. It's fine. Let's uh let's make a rolling garage door over here. Again, I'm just gonna grab my rectangle tool. in perspective. I'm going to grab our straight line tool. Just going to mark this out evenly. And you can see that the lines follow perspective. I don't have to sit here and calculate it out. It just does it. Of course, you could do roofs on this. Let's do, let's do a roof right here. We'll do it the same way. So that will go this way. And then we're just gonna take off our perspective ruler for a second so that we can figure out where the center is. If you want to go beyond here, so that there's a little bit of an overhang, go for it. Let's do it on both sides. Let's do it nicely on both sides. perspective ruler back on before we attempt to be silly. All right. So let's slap that back on. Here we have a roof. Probably should come out 
Oops. We should come out just a little bit more. garage door and I did um, I did this one so that you can see you can make it go in it doesn't just have to pop out like that this is easier to see when you're first starting out so go ahead and and do like the forward cube but if you want to go backwards you definitely can so here's our perspective ruler on this one and you can see it's not that different from the first one this one's uh, like center point is a little more this way right here and right here and I used the I used the shape tools to make all of this this little gallery wall here but that's just uh you know let's just go on like this and then I wanted I wanted frames so I just went like this. Go on the outside too, that's fine. And I just drew I just drew lines for all of these boards. But you could have done you can do it with the uh, the rectangle tool. I just drew lines though. off the edges. Oops. And here you can see I drew a little little floor grate. Same same way as everything. I just drew lots of little lines that go through here to make it look like a grate. You could go the other way too. You wanted it to be this sort of great. So that you're less likely to lose your keys down your heating. But uh, yeah, it's, it's super simple. And it always looks super good. Like, look how nice that looks. It's gorgeous. And I didn't spend barely any time on this. I spent most of my time on this one. <laughs> That's fine. We're gonna, gonna do a quick save because I kind of like these and I might put them up somewhere. And then this is three-point perspective. Kind of looks like two-point perspective right now, but there's a third point down here, right there. You make these, you make two-point and three-point perspective the same way that you make one-point perspective. Let's grab a new, a new thing. So let's grab our perspective ruler. I'm just gonna I want I want a point on the right side of the canvas. So I'm gonna do this and it'll just make that for me. And then I'm gonna do this. And it'll make that for me. And you can see it's a little wobbly. So we're gonna click on this. And this is your horizon line, the blue one. So if you hold the shift and pick up these little blue things, if you don't hold them, you can you can swing it all around. Whee! Uh, but if you hold them, it'll snap to, to horizontal. And then you have just normal, normal sane things. But like, if you're working off a photograph, very little in real life is perfectly straight up and down. Uh, even after you correct it in Photoshop or whatever. So, like, 
it's okay for this to not be up and down if you don't want it to be. It doesn't have to be. And we're gonna grab, we're gonna uh, go back to our ruler. And then make, so now it's in two point perspective. We could work on this now and be in two point perspective. But if we want three point perspective, just go up from the bottom or down from the top to make our third point. And there you have it. That's three point perspective. Doesn't look like much, but it gets real complicated real fast. So if you've seen people draw buildings that go up, 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 up in this sort of wonky direction, that's usually three point perspective. Let's grab, let's grab vector so that I don't have to be annoyed. Uh, you can make things seem very, very tall from here. Because it looks like you're looking down on it. And you can also just grab the perspective ruler. I'm gonna flip these all the way around. So the other upside down. And do another one. So this will look like we're looking down on it. And all of your tools will still work normally in this. So if you want to use the rectangle tool, it'll still do it. You want to use the circle tool? Absolutely. That is three point perspective. Let's look at the drawing I actually made. So I just did a room from like the top corner. And you can see these outside walls are going in. They're going in like that. All of the vertical lines in this piece are going in towards this bottom point. Gives it a little bit of exaggeration, a little bit more life than a regular two-point perspective drawing, so it looks less, like, architectural and more like an illustration or more candid. Uh, and I think it looks cool. It's a lot of fun to do, but it is, in my opinion, the hardest of the three, which makes sense because you're working with three points. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I mean, everything's in perspective. Uh, I just used the circle tool to make a couple of circles and make them line up. Actually, you want to do it this way. So you'd want to draw a circle and then grab it upwards and then draw your other circle. But better.
Look studious being a little finicky, but something like that and you'll get you'll get your your little poof here, your little stool. And again, here's a mirror in perspective, here's the closet doors in perspective, here's some books in perspective, here's the computer with a tablet in perspective. Uh, I didn't add a keyboard because I didn't want to draw one. Here's some plants. Here's the bed. And all of this is in perspective. Like, all of this is... is uh, following the rules. It's a little stiff because I was uh, working fast. <laughs> I was streaming for six hours today to get this done. But that is the perspective ruler. It's a lot of fun. I really like it. Uh, I use it uh, pretty often. Uh, I have some other pieces that use it. Uh, we used it for... One of our illustrations earlier. So you can see I used the, the perspective tool for the background in this uh, fan art. That was lots of fun. I used it for this piece. I referenced a photograph. Uh, it's way down at the bottom. Just because I rip all the pieces out of this piece. Boop. So I just used it for the perspective of what I wanted. You can see I didn't really use anything else. I just wanted to know where the bar, how tall the bar would be and how tall the bar stools would be. Uh, so I used it for that and then I traced the perspective with the ruler. You can see this is it's a bit of a mess over here, but that's how real life be. Real life isn't perfect. So when you do this, uh, if you're using a, a photograph to do this, just realize that it's going to be wonky. Like, like this, this is going to look messy, but it's fine because you want that that real life wonkiness in some pieces. Don't be afraid of it. I'm just going to close this and not save. Do not save. <laughs> uh, I used it for the background on Anna. Uh, when we did uh, how How Clip Studio handles vectors. So this was our vector art piece. And I think that's all of the, oh I used them for I used it for Made Cafe. Made Cafe uh, perspective ruler. There you go. So this is a one point perspective drawing. Here's your middle point right here. Or here's your singular point. It doesn't have to be in the middle, it can be like off the page, doesn't matter. It's if if there's one point, it's a one point perspective. So, you know. Definitely slap it down and play with it, because what have you got to lose? It's lots of fun. Uh, we're going to do some more on the special rulers, because we have time. And I like the special rulers, so we're going to do them real quick. One of my favorite and like the crowd pleaser is the symmetry ruler. So number of lines isn't really number of lines. Number of lines is how many times the thing is mirrored. So. Uh, what I like to do, because I work, because I have to work like in symmetry in a large, in a large piece. So I know that this is 5,000 pixels. So I need 250 pixels. It's right there. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to pull straight down. And that's what shift does. It'll Hold it vertical for you, or horizontal. So 
So there you go. And now anything I draw on one side will be on the other side. This is useful for faces that are staring straight at you. Especially if they have horns. It can do more. Let's crank this up to eight lines. Boop. Now, anything I draw in one little pizza will show up in all of them. Of the line tool. Be fancy. This is a really great way to make like super cool patterns and shit, but also like mandalas and, and stuff like that. Um, there's like lots of historical art that uses uh, symmetry in this way. Unfortunately, you'll notice that it doesn't erase symmetrically. So if you want to erase symmetrically, go down to here, and while you're on your pen or pencil tool, select the clear thing, and then, because it thinks it's a pen, it will erase symmetrically. Et voila. Uh, I'm gonna talk about guides real quick. You can make a guide anywhere. It will only go straight vertical or straight horizontal. And when your guide is working, you cannot draw anywhere but on the guide. When your guide is working... Uh, it says snap to guide, snap to ruler, snap to special ruler. Oh, if you start on the guide, it will follow that guide. I remember things. You notice that I don't have the guide and the symmetry tool active at the same time. They're on different layers. And if you stack them, then you have to like worry about which one is working right then. But I can still work outside of the guides as long as I don't start on the guides. Uh, and this is useful. I, I used it in the desk illustration. So you can see the guides measuring out the top of my monitor and the edges of my desk. So you can see them everywhere uh, as I was trying to, you know, get this accurate or accurate-ish. I was using it to measure where the feet should go. And uh, it was very helpful to keep everything straight and in line. Actually, let's go back to the desk and I'll take the photograph off. There you are. See, now you can see the lines a little better. Uh, 
special ruler. I like the parallel line special ruler a lot, or parallel curve special ruler a lot. Uh, so if you need to keep everything in a certain, like, line, I would use this. So... Let me put it on its own layer. So now every everything that I do is on these lines. They're all parallel and they run the entire course of the, the thing. The um the canvas. And I used this in the um the DM uh on um, illustration. And I used it to do all of the hatch marks. So you see all of the hatch marks on the D20, on his shoes, and his hair. They're all perfectly parallel because I used that tool. I also used it on the curves up here to make sure that I was in line with all of my uh, lettering. Let me see. So if I turn this back on, you can see the curves here. See, these ones are purple, that means they're active. But it'll continue this perfect curve all the way up. And if you want to switch which one's active, grab your operation, click on a different one, and click snap. Just make sure that this little Marcus thing is, is checked. And you'll see it's purple now, so only the purple one is, is the active one. No, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so even though, like, we're very far away from it. It's still working. I don't quite know why it's uh, becoming a V. But I guess because my, my curve is not is not super curvy. So it's happening. We'll do it on this clean one. Let's make a new layer. I'm gonna go to special ruler, parallel curve. And it's just like when you make a continuous curve with the, the curve tool. You just click along it and it'll uh, click along the curve you wanna make. So even though I'm gonna drag my brush straight across, my pen's going straight, my line is curving. Because the, the guide, the guide is there to protect me from myself. There's a multiple curve tool. And that just does the same thing, but you can keep keep making curves. And again, the purple one is the one that's active. And if you want to switch, Again, operation, click on a one that isn't 
snap to and hit snap. It'll change colors so that way you know it's active. And now it'll snap to this curve. This is, this is radial line. Let's, uh, should make, yeah. So this will make, like, if, if you're doing, like, a, a sunburst effect, uh, you'll see this in, like, manga and anime a lot. Uh, action lines going like this, radiating out from a spot, hence radial, cur radial guide. And that's pretty cool. You can use it to make spider webs, which I like. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do that real quick, just for funsies. Let's put one here. Spider webs are not perfect, so. Let's do that, and then we're going to unshow the ruler. Now we can make our little spider web bits. Yay, spiderwebs! You can also use it for like sunrises or sunsets. Oh. And um, you'll see like uh, this sort of pattern in Art Deco sometimes, or Art Nuevo, both of those. Uh, and you can you can use it to to uh, you know. Your shining rays. You can space them out all evenly and carefully. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing and not a chaos monster. So we did guide and I think that's everything. Yep. That is all of the guides and special rulers. I love these tools. I hope you'll love these tools because they make life so much easier.